Hello heroes and all, I am back again with another Gyro Falcon Shubert build that is better than the one we did last time because boy oh boy, this one packs a ton of heat. The last build we did covered how it will be effective in in-game and how you can expand on this usage a lot when combined with other users. This time round, we're going to be looking the other way of this and use a version that offers non-stop damage buff when triggered and this one alone will allow you to deal with huge damage as long as you're connecting the dots to get things going. Endgame or not, this setup has potential to make doing any content a breeze when you constantly are buffed and if you really want to see how nutty this author can get, then I suppose this might be up your alley. But you know what else is up your alley? This channel right here. So if you enjoy the content then please leave a like, a sub and turn on your notifications so you don't miss out on future content. I would really appreciate it. Let's start with the subclass, we will be using Mobius Quiver and from there we'll be using the same setup that we used last time but with a few changes involved. To fully make the build work is wonders, we will need to utilize being invisible as much as possible and the best way around this is to use Styles Executioner and rely on this ability to make you go invis if we get a target volatile or debuffed. Stylus Execution now states that defeating a weakened, suppressed or volatile target grants invisibility and true sight. This is key to triggering our exotic non-stop and pulling in the huge damage numbers one after another. We also have Vanishing Step which will allow you to go invis by dodging. A fragments wise, you'll want Echo of Remnant which will increase our grenade duration, Echo of Domineering where after suppressing a target you get increased mobility and weapons are reloaded, Echo of Undermining where you avoid grenades of weakened targets and Echo Instability where defeating a target with grenades make your avoid weapon volatile. For stats you want to aim for 70 to 100 in mobility, 60 to 80 in resilience and 100 in discipline. Although it would make a lot more sense to add some points into strength stat as well, as long as you have a relatively high mobility stat and rely on the gambler's dodge ability, you can free up getting your smoke grenade debuffs with absolute ease. A key mods to focus on is Battleful Well for plus 2 wells created, Elemental Ordnance for creating wells via grenade kills, Thunder Wisdom for plus 50 in intellect stat regen over time, Reaping Wellmaker for creating wells after getting a kill and then dodging straight after, and then Powerful Friends for plus 20 in mobility and additional bonuses. Similar to how we did this last time, our cooldown rate will be relatively fast under the right circumstances. But the main strength of the build will be coming from our grenades which will be debuffing a number of combatants and allowing us to get that 35% damage boost for longer than 5 seconds. However, grenades being used will vary as each one will have different cooldowns attached to them and depending on how often you want to proc them and where, you will need to see what player style of grenades is best for you first before going ahead with it. So let's go over the weapons used as this time you're going to want to play a specific playstyle you must have a void weapon on hand so we can utilize our cypher mods and echo instability. After that you can pick and choose freely as to what you'd like to main throughout. A good weapon to start with is to have this smite on Merian Pulse with Demolitions and Draining Junkie which is a perfect one mode combo to have. You can only get this from the raid and whether you get this roll or not is 50-50. However, since our build will be using grenades and melee a lot we can get a 33% weapon buff if we reach 5 stacks of Adrenaline Junkie. Now add on top of the 35% from Gyro Falcons and you can absolutely be a menace with this setup that is perfect for end game or even PvP if you wish. Now of course don't worry if you don't have this weapon at all as it's not easy to get but you can get the Hailing Confusion Pulse which is a similar weapon type as Merin I can get the Demo Perk as well but only in the last slot and this may not be what you want overall. Secondary wise we have the Wave Splitter Trace Rifle which has made a shocking return for Void Freeman O users. The issue with the weapon at first was the lack of ways to create orbs which in the past made the weapon strong but situational in all activities. Fast forward to now and the weapon has gotten a number of changes to make it more applicable in all scenarios. I chose this weapon particularly because the supercharged battery perk which will enhance the weapon's damage even more when we collect an all power and then adding on an exotic allows us to turn our trace rifle into a laser cannon on full blast. It's insane how powerful the exotic can get when it's properly tuned as such a weapon can be used as DPS if the right amount of work is placed into it which you will see. Now heavy wise we have the hothead with tracking round next to of light and although avoid weapon is better here. This was chosen so I can utilize the orbs of power created to maximize our explosive light perk. You can follow it in the same footsteps if you wish 
and if you have the Palomai B Rocket Launcher with the perk as well, then that's endgame right there for you. But I also don't see this being needed so much if you have another heavy weapon that is available and better suited for your build in mind. For stats, instead of us focusing on mobility through all of it, we will be using grenades instead at a much higher rate than normal. If you watched my last video, I explained that you can reduce your mobility down to 70 to 80, and that would be fine if you trigger Dryer Falcon's ability, See Me, Feel Me, which allows users to get increased class ability regen where you are in Viz, and also get a finisher on a target. This means that if you're going to use your finisher non stop on targets, then you can reduce your mobility as you see fit, and you will still get a very fast cooldown shortly. This will always be active and available, so in case you miss your grenades, you can rely on your mobility instead, and also the use of elemental wells also help. Keeping your mobility at 70 for this build specifically is fine going forward, and you can increase it to 100 if you wish, but this is ultimately down to you, and if you have the stats available, do so. For your discipline, aim for 100 as you want to use your grenade as much as possible so you can weaken targets fast and activate your aspects and volatile rounds combo. This is all you need with making the build slightly effective at what it's meant to do and can be easily pulled off with any grenade being used. Although, from testing I've found that the void wall grenades are the best to use in the build as it has a much shorter duration compared to all the other grenades which fall around a 2 minute cooldown. You ideally want to have a fast grenade cooldown so you can activate your skills more often, but at the same time you can use your suppression or vortex grenades so you can trigger debuffs much faster. Depending on where you use this build, you may not want to use void walls or even trace rifles if the encounters don't fit the flow of the build on hand. This is why playing around with weapon types and grenades will be important if you want to use this in much higher level content at a later date. We then have strength at 20, which as I explained earlier, isn't a big issue if you use gambler's dodge a lot. I would say though as backup to have absolution on spare so all your abilities can have fast cooldown when collecting all the power. I would then add on outreach and want to finish mod to further decrease the cooldown rate of our melee if we get into a very rough situation and waste both our mobility and discipline. You can follow in my footsteps if you wish. But you don't need to if you feel confident enough with just your dodge. Left over wise we have the Harmonic Cypher mod for creating orbs of power via matching elemental subclass and weapon type, Trace Rifle Ammo Finder for increasing our chances for more ammo for our Trace Rifle, and Trace Rifle Scavenger mod for reserve ammo for the given weapon type. That should summarize everything about the stat section you need, so here are the mods compiled into one for you. For head, we have resilience, trace rifle scavenger, humlock siphon, and powerful well mod. Arm, we have mobility, bolstering detonation, elemental ordnance mod. Chest, we have discipline, thermal shot plating, concussive dampener, a front of wisdom mod. Leg, we have minor discipline, trace rifle scavenger, absolution, and reaper well maker mod. Cloak, we have resilience, one two finisher, outreach, and powerful friends mod. The aggressiveness of the build allows players to really lean into the exotic at its fullest and consistently get a feel as to how the exotic should work for all. The exotic as a whole is unique to what we usually work with, considering the fact that it's offering a lot to user without needing to really do much. Going in this is the number one skill hunters are so used to, and the number of exotics based around it shows when you see builds based around it so much. The Gyro Falcons is no different, but the fact that we can get overshield, damage buff, and fast class ability regen just from going invis shows that Bungie really wants you to go invisible as much as you can, and the build really does show it. Compared to our endgame variation, this setup allows users to proc invisibility by simply debuffing targets and then keeping that suppression effect as long as possible. Wave Splitter, as an example, benefits from this greatly as its fire rate is continuous and this built-in perk allows us to increase damage by tenfold just by activating it. Because of this, it allows the following setup to really show off what the build is capable of doing to master tier content. It's great and highly effective at eating through a champion's to boss health on relative levels, but it does suffer from ammo dependency as you will come across a number of fights where you will burn through your ammo faster than Kalos at a Chinese buffet. This is why it will be important for you to switch up your void weapon to something that won't be ammo heavy but still making the build viable in all encounters. You also got to remember that what you're seeing is possible in master content 
but not guaranteed all the time as some combatants take a lot of ammo to kill. Take this how it is, a great and fun build to use that can allow you to do some monster damage on a low to mid tier content difficulty, but is not viable enough for the much harder content as it's hard to proc everything and get working on time. If you wish to use this in end game, then you'll want to focus more on your mobility and strength to put the invisibility as much as often, and then go from there. And yes, you can use this in GMs, but until I go ahead and test it, go ahead and just use this up to master tier content for now. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny news and content. Once again, thanks for stopping by, stay safe, and I'll see you on the next one.